The study of thermodynamics begins with our laziness. We wanted to create a machine that can do work for us because we didn't want to do that work or were not capable or wanted something else to take our place. Now, if you think about it, even a rock falling on, a, on the ground does some work, right? If there was some other rock, it might push it or it just does some work against the earth. But now, is that work useful to us? It might be if you put a button or a spring so that the rock compresses it and we use that compression for something else. So what we want these machines to do is to do some useful work, okay? A work that can be used. And for that, back in the 1800s, we designed something called as the heat engine. Okay. Now a heat engine works on this principle and we are going to learn that principle now. And I know that we have always been curious about heat engines because we know that heat engines are used in cars, bikes, and airplanes. And uh, when I was a kid, uh, I always wanted to, you know, grow up and design a car or, or, or a bike, or like, you know, really super fast uh, jet plane or something like that. But the sad part is, in this section, which we're going to deal, we, we don't go into the design part of these engines. We don't design it because designing these engines is uh, a part of mechanical engineering, which you'll do, of course, in an engineering college. What we're going to do is learn the basic idea behind designing these engines, the basic principle on which the heat engines work. So if I dismantle this heat engine, what I'll find is, in theory, there's a working substance inside, okay, which could be the fuel plus air, or whatever is the mechanism through which we are making that engine work. And what do we do is this, we supply some heat to that engine or that working system. Let's say that heat is delta Q1. And that heat is supplied from some reservoir, let's say which is uh, placed at a temperature T1. So from a reservoir at a temp temperature T1, we supply some heat Q1 to the working substance. And what does the working substance do? Of course, this working substance does some work on the surrounding, plus it gives off some heat, let's say delta Q2. So we have some delta Q1 amount of heat coming in, delta W amount of work being done, and delta Q2 amount of heat given off to the surrounding. Extremely simple, okay? Now what? Now let's recall the mathematical statement for the first law of thermodynamics. What is that? It's nothing but the conservation of energy. And if I apply the conservation of energy in this case, what would I get? See, I'm supplying energy in the form of heat, delta Q1, and that energy is given off in the form of work, delta W, and some of it is given off in the, in the form of heat again, delta Q2. So conservation of energy tells us that delta Q1 must be equal to delta W plus delta Q2. So from there I get delta W equal to delta Q1 minus delta Q2. So in a heat engine, the thing which we are actually interested in is the efficiency. Now the most commonplace idea about efficiency is this, okay? It's a ratio of uh, what did I get divided by what did I pay for? So if you look into this, what did I get? Did I get that heat delta Q2? Of course not, right? It is lost to the surrounding. It's not useful. What's useful is that work, delta W. That's what I got. So in the numerator, I'll get delta W. And what did I pay for? And how much did I pay? How much did we pay? We just paid the heat. We gave the heat from the fuel or whatever, right? Into the system, which was delta Q1. So the ratio of delta W by delta Q1 will give us the efficiency of the heat engine. Okay, represented by that letter eta. Now, if I want to write this work in the form of heat, I can write it as delta Q1 minus delta Q2. This is from the first equ equation that we wrote. Now, that becomes 1 minus delta Q2 divided by delta Q1. And that's the efficiency of a heat engine. Now, if someone asks you to find the efficiency in percentage, all you have to do is multiply this by 100 and you'll get that in percentage. Now, when I saw this equation for the first time when I was in, uh, I think I was in 11th, or I think I was in 10th or something. But when I saw this equ equation for the first time, this expression, I felt, you know, you can totally make the efficiency 100%. How? By making that delta Q2 equals to zero. Because of course you can't make delta Q1 equals to infinity, you cannot give infinite energy. What you can do, is somehow make sure that the engine doesn't dissipate any heat at delta Q2 is zero. And I, uh, I started like wondering that uh, if you could design such a machine 
then you would have solved a, a big part of the energy crisis that we are facing. The amount of fuel which we put in in our bikes would completely give us the mileage or whatever you call it. Now, it turns out that in nature, there's another fundamental independent law that doesn't allow that. It says that delta Q2 can never be zero. We'll go into that, but let's discuss about heat engine a little bit more. Now, the way we design this heat engine is such that uh, the engine is at some state, okay, let's say some state A. From that state A, it goes to some other state, let's say B. Then from that state, it goes to some other state, let's say C, then D. But in the end, it comes back to the same state A. Any process which comes back to the original state from where it had started is called a cyclic process. Okay, so the heat engine process is a cyclic process. And that's because we want the engine to keep on going, to keep on repeating itself. And for that, the whole process should be a cyclic process. By the way, I just recalled, and there was this uh, friend of mine in school, and he, he, he heard my idea that I'm going to make an engine which is 100% efficient. He told me, you know what? I'm going to make an engine which is 200% efficient. And I was like, wow, that's, that's even a better idea. But then we thought about it for 15 minutes, and we realized that that's not possible. Because see, if the efficiency is more than 100%, what does that mean? It means that you gave some heat, right, delta Q1, and the work which it gave out was more than the heat that you had supplied. It completely violates the first law of thermodynamics, and first law of thermodynamics cannot be violated. So one thing is clear, okay, that you cannot have an efficiency more than 100%. And also on top of that, another layer which I added, is that nature has sort of put a limit that even 100% is not possible, we'll discover that later. So this was heat engine, simple, right? Give some heat, get some work, get some heat pushed out. And that's what a heat engine is. For more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.